Well, hey folks, Jeff Salzman here and welcome to The Daily Evolver. Thank you to the Institute for Cultural Evolution and to Integral Life for co-sponsoring this podcast and hosting it every week, Wednesdays at three o'clock Eastern time on Integral Life's YouTube and the Cultural Evolution Facebook page. And of course, you can check out all my stuff at dailyevolver.com, Twitter, Facebook, and Daily Evolver YouTube. Okay, uh, I'm excited to bring you our guest today. It's Steve Banks. He's an accomplished, integrally inspired composer who is about to drop a fantastic new piece of music that is both classical and cutting edge. It's called Blue Pearl, a one world oratorio, and it will be performed for the first time in London next month. The Blue Pearl is itself a fascinating example of integral consciousness arising in an established art form. In its structure, it's a classical oratorio. What is an oratorio, you ask? Well, I looked it up. An oratorio is a large scale musical work for orchestra and voices, typically a narrative on a religious theme, performed without the use of costumes, scenery, or action. Well known examples include Bach's Christmas Oratorio, Handel's Messiah, and Haydn's The Creation. So, Blue Pearl is in that tradition, but in its spiritual inspiration, it's explicitly integral. And I love it for that. Steve fuses several musical styles and the work celebrates that unity and diversity that is the trademark of the integral vision. The central image is of the earth as seen from space, the Blue Pearl, a fragile, living, conscious planet. The lyrics come from writings by Ken Wilber, Thich Nhat Hanh, and Steve himself. So the world premiere is coming May 14th at the St. Giles Cripplegate Church in London. It will be performed by the London Mozart Players and two choirs, the Excelsis Choir and the Vox Farnham Chamber Choir. You can check out Steve's website, stevebanks.info. He has a prototype of the entire work posted, all the lyrics and all kinds of in, in, integral information. I, I, I really kind of hung out at the website for quite a while actually. And of course there's information there on how to attend in person if you can or live stream it. Uh, and again, you can find out all that uh, at stevebanks.info. In this conversation, Steve will tell us about both the inspiration and the perspiration of bringing a work like this to life. I start by asking him how he came to integral thinking in the first place. Here's Steve Banks. Peace. I got, so I got very heavily into, into Ken's writing, you know, okay. um, sex ecology, spirituality, it took, a f it took a few books before kind of suddenly there was like, <laughs> like an avalanche. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but then I just read everything I could. Um, and so this would have been in the early 2000s. Yeah. 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 So, you're, went, so you're, you're a musician at the same time? Yeah. So maybe give us a little bit of that lineage. Yes, sure, sure. So, um, yeah, I, I did work as a classical violinist in London with the play with orchestras like the London Symphony Orchestra and various other other uh -huh. ensembles and uh, yeah music has always just somehow it's been like almost like my first language in a way I don't know it's, I think I wrote my first song in around 1993 so songwriting was for me um, a big part of my that personal development journey you know I found I, I wrote quite a few songs that were explicitly about issues that I was kind of dealing with in that in that path and then later on you know as, as I got into meditation Buddhist meditation like the song Be Still which is in 
in the Blue Pearl Oratorio. I wrote that a long time ago. Um, and that was actually, that was from my very first weekend, a uh, Buddhist weekend I ever did, which was uh, in the early 90s with um, a well-known Tibetan Rinpoche in London. And he did this beautiful, absolutely beautiful summary of meditation with gestures and just three phrases. And I can still, so I paraphrased that to make the song be still, I put it into my own words, but I still remember his beautiful expression. It was, he had like, bring the mind home, release the grasping, relax into your Buddha nature. Mm. It's just a beautiful, very mm. succinct uh, summary of um, meditation. Yeah, wow. yeah. So then, yeah, several years later, actually four years later, after writing that string quartet, I was sitting in a rehearsal for the Verdi Requiem, which is a piece I love since childhood. Uh, and, uh, you know, this suddenly the thought came into my mind, is there a piece like this, but integral? You know, mm -hmm. an obvious question for me at that point, really. Yeah. Um, and I looked around a bit online. Um, I couldn't find anything, so I thought I'd have a go at writing one. Uh-huh, Yeah. Yeah, well, it's, as you say, th this piece is rooted in the Western sacred choral tradition, which yeah. I love myself personally. And so you're coming up through that. And, you know, just if, if the evolution of consciousness and culture are true, then, you know, there is a, a, an expression of that at this integral stage. Absolutely. And that's what you're going for. And I think you have um, really expressed it beautifully. So mm -hmm. maybe we shift into talking about the piece itself, how it came to be, and uh, maybe share some uh, excerpts from, from it. Yeah, course. sure. So um, I wrote it on and off in kind of bursts over six years. So the whole thing took six years. Um, and it was, the writing of it was, I, I did an interview with a psychosynthesis po podcast and I saw on her website a lovely quote from Picasso who said that um, the meaning of your life is to find your gift mm. and the, the purpose of your life is to give it away, which I think wow. is a lovely, yeah. So the, the writing of this piece has been an extraordinary gift for me, I mean, I just, you know, beyond absolutely priceless. Um, there's a, a kind of sense of I had this real desire, you know, a real, a real strong, wouldn't it be wonderful to have music that, that really kind of conveyed integral? Mm -hmm. Well, let me just pause there. Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, I, my experience with integral was that it was like the scales fell from my eyes. You know, that there was a different way of seeing this world and experiencing this world. And I felt the updraft of evolution in my body in mm -hmm. ways, you know, so it was like all changes of worldview and, and religious conversions. You become a new person in a way. Mm -hmm. So this is very exciting. And is that true for you? And, you know, for me, it, it just reoriented my life. Um yeah. How, maybe what, what's your experience of it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I can't imagine my life um, without it. It's um, cognitively, you know, I had, I had a way to um, think about and um, place my spiritual experiences and my spiritual desire with meditation. I suddenly, you know, here was a map where I could be rational and all these, you know, all these other things at the same time. But also, um, I, I, actually, I, it's a quote that Ben says used in the Integral um, European Conference uh, blurb sometimes. You know, I, told, I, I wrote to him after I went to the first, the first Integral Conference I went to was in 2018 in, in, uh, in Hungary. And I... I went into an altered state for several days during that conference wow. um, and partly found the, 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 the dance experiences. I did three dance workshops and they just completely sort of activated this. Um, I suppose, I don't know how to describe it exactly, but 
I just felt um, kind of tuned in on all levels and just really humming with um, and, and that sense of um, what you're just describing. I think that the updraft, I love that the updraft of evolution in, and and also even on the online ones, which surprised me, um, the online ones which I've been to since, I had the similar experience um, being with these people from all around the world, um, having these conversations uh, uh, in breaks and in the lunch with people who were just inspiring to talk to um, yes. and just kind of mutual resonance, you know. Yes, yes. Um, mutual and, resonance is well played. Uh-huh, yeah. And I, I found myself, it was, I had, it was literally like an image, like this kind of stuff kind of beaming into my head, <laughs> telling me to convey in my presentation that we are earth beings. You know, and my piece, the piece is called Blue Pearl. Blue Pearl is the image of the earth seen from space as a whole. And I, I, I'm kind of full of, as it were, I'm full of the understanding that I sitting here and you sitting there are the earth evolved. So, you know, from, from rocks to plants to animals to humans it is, a, is a continuum. And we are rocks that think <laughs> yeah. and, and feel. Um, and and I, I got everyone on my, on my Zoom in my presentation, I got everyone to rename themselves Earth in capitals hyphen and then their name. Uh -huh. Yeah. So it was just kind of putting that first yeah. Yeah, before I, it's, and, and as Ken says, you know, in, in his books, talking more about us being the cosmos, expressing itself and aware of itself, you know, it's just the same thing, but for the earth that we, we are primarily, or you can certainly, you can tune into that aspect that we are the earth awake, aware of itself, currently, sadly, injuring itself. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, um, yeah. So absolutely, it changed my life. <laughs> so this is then you expressing that artistically in this choral form. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your creative process and how it came together and then sh share a piece for us. Yes, sure. So <clears throat> where I started, uh, I was it was very clear where to start was um, with this piece of writing by Ken in uh, the July entry in, in One Taste, uh, his book One Taste, which was, came out in 2000. Yeah, and it's kind of a diary of his life at that time. It's yeah. Wonderful, wonderful book. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely a wonderful book. Um, so he, anamnesis, for those that haven't read it or heard about it, uh, it, it means unforgetting or remembering and apparently he he, you know, he talks about a sort of preamble about it that he was coming out of a, a sort of causal level meditation in other words a kind of a god god identity divine identity meditation and of course in that meditation there is nothing because it's formless <laughs> but as he came out uh he had this experience over 15 minutes, uh, which he compares to when someone dies, they're, they're said to experience the whole of their life in a flash, um, which is, of course, a kind of uh, a transrational, transpersonal thing, because how can you experience all of that time in a flash? But um, anyway. Yeah, outside so he, of time, apparently you can. Right outside of time, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he says that he had a similar experience, but instead of his life, he was remembering the life of the whole universe. Mm. And so then he went to, to try and convey that experience in words. Uh, so he's got these little vignettes, beautiful little vignettes of a first-person portrayal of the evolution of all the different stages of the evolution of the universe, uh, and so the different levels of consciousness evolving. Yeah. And I, because it's written in a first person, um, you know, he's got these little scenes of, of people imagining being a, an actual person. I thought it was very poetic. Uh, and, the, and the passages towards the end are absolutely beautiful, the, the, the kind of transpersonal 
So I thought that would be wonderful to set to music. So that's where I started. And that piece, Anamnesis, uh, comes near the beginning of the oratorio. And it's kind of, I see it as the backbone of the whole piece. Um, it gives the, it give, you know, it gives you the spectrum of consciousness um, right from, in fact, it, there's a piece before it, which is Evolution 5, which starts with the Big Bang. Uh -huh. uh, so Evolution 5 takes you from physical evolution through the formation of the Earth and through uh, biological evolution in five minutes, right up to the arrival of human beings. And then anamnesis, as it were, unfolds that human evolution to all the, the, the layers of the spectrum of consciousness. Yeah, and, and so beautifully. Thank you. Yeah, and, and let me just say that for people who want to check this out, it's at stevebanks.info. Dot 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 info. Stevebanks.info. Yeah. And you have many excerpts. And well, actually, the whole piece is there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. And uh, which adds up to how, how long is the whole piece? It's a, it's an evening's concert. So it's about 85 minutes of uh -huh. music. Yeah. 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 Wonderful. And I, I have to say also that you have all the lyrics and you have the, your, your explanation of the integral map and the integral vision. It's really quite informative. I ended up spending a lot of time just on your website. Oh, good. So I encourage it to people, stevebanks.info. Thank you. All right, so this will be this this is posted on there, and you're going to share a little bit of it now. And yeah. this is again amna anamnesis. I, I can never pronounce it. <laughs> anamnesis. So I'm going to play uh, a little clip, which is from um, what he called a section he called the subtle. So so I'm going to play the lecture from that, and I'll just read the words in case people can't make out the words because they're absolutely beautiful. These are Ken's Ken's words. So it's um, nature retreats before its source. In this sublime vastness, light finds its own abode. Shimmering sheaths of luminous bliss, each softer yet stronger, brighter yet fainter, more intense yet harder to see. I am full, full to infinity in this ocean of light, ocean of bliss, ocean of love. Peace unto you, my sisters and brothers, peace, for all is well, and all is well, and all manner of things are well. The last bit being, of course, a quote from Julian of Norwich. So. Great. Yeah. So I'll play this clip now, shall I? Yes, indeed. Okay. Thank you. 
Yeah, wonderful. I can, I, I feel a distinct state change. I, I, I'm, I'm moved to talk about what just happened, you know, music itself. And on your site, you quote Brother David Stendhal Ross, a wonderful quote about what music is. And I'm going to read it here. Mm. And he says, um, every human being longs for wisdom, longs to be touched by the mystery. A good example is music. And then this is the part I love. We can't grasp music. Nobody can grasp music. But we can understand music. How do we understand music? When it grasps us, when it does something to us, then we understand. This is a big, pretty accurate image for what it means to be in touch with what I call mystery. Mm. So yeah, so what you just played is transmitting something to us beyond words and thought, really. Just a direct transmission. And how cool is that? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I, one of my um, thoughts about the, the whole piece, kind of, since I finished it, really, is um, that, you know, Ken talks about... Um, when you read about integral, that it's psychoactive, that lovely yeah. phrase. Yeah. And, and I, I've experienced that several times that, you know, when you get into a flow reading his book, you, I get, you go into an altered state that you get, you know, and a real kind of, wow, kind of thing happens. And I think, what you know, like you're just saying, music has a similar effect, but it's kind of going in through a different door yeah. to reading. Um, and, it is absolutely wonderfully mysterious uh, how, why and how music affects yeah. us the way it does. Yeah, because it's just sound waves. I mean, it's just <laughs> hitting our eardrum. I mean, what's up with that? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, Steve, I mean, I've always wondered this when I listen to, to you know, choral music, classical music, or orchestral music. How do you manage to write this stuff? With mm. so many things happening at once, you've got all these instruments and you've got these voices. And um, tell us a little bit about that. Mm. The short answer is, I don't know. <laughs> that really is most of it. A metaphor I have for it is that it's like I, I created a boat. I built a boat with a sail. And I want, I want, I've got this real desire to, my, my love of music and my love of integral, my, this real desire to bring them together. So I build the boat and then this wind arrives and blows in the sail. Wow. And where the wind comes from, I don't know. It, it's one moment it's not there and the next moment it is there. And, and stuff appeared. I'm writing on the computer. So I'm, I'm using a piece of software because my, pian my piano skills are not up to the task. So I'm writing on the computer and what you just said about all this stuff arriving at once, I, I don't know how that happens, but it, it, but it, <laughs> but it happened. And I can't, I can't explain. It's, it's, there are some passages where it's like there's more clearly a cognitive a process that I can identify involved. So, for instance, that, that piece, Evolution 5, um, this idea came that evolution is like a, 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 an exponential curve. You know, this what, what Ken refers to as, as the winding up of the universe and how it's got kind of faster and faster. Um, and I thought, wouldn't it be great to represent that curve in music with, by having the key go up? So, that, you know, you have, a, you have a key signature for a piece, which tends, usually it stays the same throughout a whole piece, and you, you move to different keys. So in this piece, I... You know, that was a kind of, you might say, a planned, that was a plan. <laughs> yeah. But where the plan comes from, you know, you, we kind of tend to distinguish between artistic creativity where, you know, just like, and it's, it's, it seems a bit miraculous somehow that yeah, some yeah. This stuff appears. But actually planning is miraculous as well. Because yes. one moment there's no plan and then there is a plan. Yes, I know. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a miraculous. So you catch that wind yeah, and then you I get into flow. I assume some way you're one with your computer program. I mean, right? Well, I, you're you're one with the you're I'm 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 
putting the music onto the page and then I'm playing back what I've just written. Okay. So there is a, there's a kind of toing and froing between what I've just written and where it's going next. But there's this really spontaneous process mostly of wanting quickly to get down onto the page what's just arrived in my head. Um, and and I, th- I remember actually reading Ken talking about writing his books, that he would go into a state where they would, he would kind of prepare and prepare. And then once, once he started writing, it was a very intense process of over several days of just getting it down on the page. I can relate to that, in it, but except that mine came out in smaller chunks, I think. Yeah. And, and there were times when I hit blocks. Um, so, for instance, there's a, the piece called um, Call Me By My True Names, which is a setting of a, a very profound poem by Thich Nhat Hanh. Mm-hmm. And I got the, the, the opening theme came into my head, which has several parts. And I thought, you know, that's I really liked it. But I couldn't see how it went on, the music. Um, so then it was a case of sitting, just sitting with that, um, hoping that something's going to happen over several months. Um, and, and it did happen. <laughs> yeah. In a very pleasing, in a way that pleased me. So it's... Um, it's, I get, you know, it's, I guess it's a bit like a river, you know, there's places, there's times when you're kind of in a, the river's really flying fast and you want to kind of keep up with it. And there's other times when it seems to have stopped, you know, like a deep pool, but actually the flow goes on somewhere in your psyche. Um, That's right. And, and, and part of it is, is sticking with the process. Yeah. Um, there's a lovely quote I remember reading years ago from Rilke in his, um, words to a young poet about being patient yeah um, yeah well uh why don't you um share another piece with us yeah sure so blue pearl again is another song that i wrote a long time ago in 2003 actually which i kind of recycled and uh, and folded into the music for the oratorio and i wrote it on a retreat but run by a really good friend of mine who is a storyteller and created, um, he's very, an early activist with sustainability. So we did a week's kind of intense retreat about how can you communicate sustainability using the arts? Um, and he and I went off to write songs. Um, we went up his, the hill in Wales in the beautiful Oakwood there mm. to write songs. And this is the song that I wrote, which came out very much as a whole I'll play a clip from that. So Blue Pearl, the, the text of the song is basically the earth speaking and the earth is saying to hum, humanity, we are one. That's basically it. And the chorus is Blue Pearl, I turn and I turn, one world, I learn and I learn. So that being a shorthand for, for evolution. Yeah. So I'll play, some, I'll play a bit from the middle of that where it kind of builds up to a climax. Um, And I'll just read the words in case they're not clear again. To you, I know it seems life runs in straight lines. You're born, you grow old, you die at your time. Listen to the turning, the changing hues. The season's passing is me and it is you. And then there's an orchestral interlude. And then the, the, the words are, you may feel a little sad knowing you'll die. And those you love, Oh me, oh my, ashes to dust, not me, you cry. There's a garden in your heart where the red rose blooms. And in the sweet bird song, you know that you are I and I am you. Hmm. And then the chorus comes back, Blue Pearl. Beautiful. So I'll play that now.
So, Steve, so you write this, and that's one thing, to create this work. Another thing is to have it produced, which <laughs> you're doing, and other people are going along and cooperating and have been swept up and are inspired, and are, we're going to have a, a, a world debut here, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. tell us about that. Yes, indeed. And, and in fact, um, you're saying that um, the – the, there's this recording that I've been playing these excerpts from on on my website, but of course it's not actually the it's not actually the artwork because it's it's a it's a synthetic orchestra, there are real people singing, but it's not a choir. It's just a few uh, a few people. So I haven't I haven't actually heard the piece myself yet. Yeah, no one's no no one's no actually one heard has. it. <laughs> and indeed, you know the experience of. People can, uh, it's all going to be filmed with a high quality um, production, lots of camera angles and a high quality audio. So people who can't make London on the 14th of May can hear it online. And I, I particularly had the integral community in mind when I set up that recording and film. Because, you know, the integral community being such a, glo a global community. Yeah. Um, and people can get tickets. Uh, yeah. Again, at stevebanks.info. Yeah. And um, and then there's a crowd uh, sourcing uh, funding. I, you know, I can't imagine this is a big money maker at least so far. <laughs> so you know, right? No, um, it's definitely not a money maker. <laughs> ask ask my wife. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, uh, I I tried to get you no. Know, it's so I I basically I'm putting on the concert myself and. Yeah, paying all the the orchestral musicians and the choir and the conductor and the venue and for the and for the thing to be filmed and streamed live. So yeah, I set up a crowd crowdfunding to, in case people wanted to chip in and be a part of that. You know, the whole project, yeah. which I saw I, you just recently, you, you've contributed to. Which I did indeed. Yes, yeah, and I encourage other people too, as moved, and they would do that at uh, stevebanks.info as well. Yeah, there's a yeah. link there, yeah. So, yeah, people can get tickets for the online, which is very, it's only £9, so I don't know, just over $10 or something. Mm -hmm. um, so, and you can tune in live, or if it's a, the bad time of the night, if you're, you know, in India or Australia or somewhere, you can, you can watch on demand for seven days after the concert. Yeah. Um, so, they, the choir's been rehearsing since January. Uh, and I'm about to go in a couple of weeks and hear, join them for a rehearsal so I can give them some feedback. Uh -huh. yeah. But they're, in, they're really enjoying seeing the piece and they're, yeah, they're really excited. The conductor jumped at it when he was invited because he, as well as being a, a classical um, musician, he loves jazz and other, other genres of music. Yeah. So he was really excited by the fact that it's not just classical, it's a crossover piece. Yeah, and, and talk a little bit about that. You have influences from jazz, from reggae. I mean, you have it, – it's quite lively, actually. It's quite <laughs> surprising. It's fun to listen to. Right, yeah. 
yeah, it's very, it's very diverse in its styles. Uh, and in fact, my classical music friends were, you know, they were a little bit shocked. Uh, and it, so I did an interview for a magazine and the, the, the woman interviewing me said, it's not really for purists, is it? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, no, I, I think that's a fair comment. So it, it's not for everyone musically. But I, it, and it's an, an, another interesting thing. I, I played, you know, I wrote that um, anamnesis, 20 minutes of music. Um, I wrote that early on and I played it to a, a very old friend of mine who's a classical musician but plays other genres. And he said to me, you know, well, it's, this sounds a bit like um, Handel and this sounds a bit like Vaughan Williams and this sounds a bit like Stravinsky. And he said, so, what, so what's your voice, your unique voice as a composer? And I was like, oh, <laughs> good, you know, good question. Uh, and I didn't have an answer, actually, for two years, although in hindsight, it's kind of obvious, but um, I didn't know the answer to that. But just in the way that the integral model brings together very diverse yeah. things like science and religion, you know, how could they possibly fit together? Yeah. yeah. And so it's, I think it, that's how I see the music. You know, how can you possibly follow a, a classical serious fugue with suddenly a bit of big band jazz? And the answer is, well, it's because it's an integral piece. Yeah. And, and you know, what, what I hope and I think is, what I believe is going to happen when people listen to the whole piece, it's like, you know, I think of all the, uh, you know, like the chakras, like the different bells, different bevel, bells with different levels of resonant frequency going all the way up our, you know, our, our spectrum. And I, what I hope is that the bell, the piece, this through its different sections, it'll get all of those bells ringing. You know, that's what I'm hoping. And that's why I think, I, I didn't think about it cognitively at all. It was just, I just set out writing intuitively. Yeah. And I think what I use different styles of music to evoke these different levels. And it's as simple as that, really. Yeah. yeah. No, you, and, and, and that happened for me. I mean, I, I, I relaxed into it uh, pretty early on. And part of it was I felt like I was in good hands somehow. <laughs> it just as simple as that. I mean, I could relax and I was going to go with this piece of music. And it was going to be interesting and it was going to take me somewhere and it was going to be fun. And I couldn't wait to see what was going to happen next. And that's, <laughs> that's pretty good. You know, <laughs> I had a wonderful time listening to it, Steve. That's lovely. That's yeah. lovely. To hear. Yeah. Yeah. I, it has, I mean, I, I, humor is a part of my kind of makeup, uh, which I got from my dad. And um, so there is a fair bit of humor in it, um, <laughs> in, including, um, you know, there's this kind of serious opening um, with a with a classical fugue, and it's talking about time and eternity, and uh, and then this, I, I, you know, one of these moments where this thing just pinged into my head, and it made me laugh when I when I kind of heard it in my head, and it was turning this, you know, ancient, profound spiritual teaching that the past and the present, uh, the past and the future, being both present experiences, and and um, I. The text I kind of paraphrased that with was, "What do you have for breakfast?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can you eat it now? <laughs> Which is basically paraphrasing "No Boundary" or the "Spectrum of Consciousness." Yeah, uh, or indeed, um, Ken has that lovely quote from Alan. Oh, I've forgotten his name now. Alan Watts. Yes, from Alan That's Watts cool. yeah. about you know you're walking. You, so uh, remember walking down the street and meeting your friend. You know, can you talk to them now? No, you yeah. can't. They're not. It's, it's no, they're not here. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's got humor in it, and especially with the sex movement, uh, that starts off very humorously, uh, and but does become serious. You know, yeah. that's a nice kind of segue, I think, from from uh, tongue in cheek to to quite serious. Yeah. Well, so that, yeah, that's lovely to hear, and and it ends. The whole piece ends with a reg, kind of reggae style big band, um, which is really about you know, a, a kind of prayer that we all may lead uh, fulfilling lives, um, which I think, and that, again, that's a song I wrote a long time ago, but um, it, fit, it seemed to fit really well at the end of this whole journey of, of integral spirituality. It's like, so what am I going to do with my life? You know, and um, I feel a bit tearful saying this, actually. Yeah. No, it's uh, it's quite moving. Um, 
Do you want to play a piece? I could play the end of the sex movement, which I think is... Uh, yeah. Uh, the that? end of the sex move, movement tends to be quite good <laughs> in general. So, um, yeah, go for it. So, I, yeah. So this, I'll just... No, actually, I don't, I don't need to read the text because it's just the choir singing, so you can hear the words quite well. No. But essentially, this um, at the end here, it's saying uh, you can experience sex at different levels of consciousness. You can experience it at a primitive level of consciousness, which is lust, or at a kind of middle level and through the heart, which is love, or in a spiritual way. And Ken did a whole thing, didn't he, about Tantra not all that long ago. And, and there it becomes divine union. So sort of pre, pre-personal, personal and transpersonal views of sex. So I'll play that then. Actually, it's interesting that the, the bit of music at the end there for the spiritual bit is essentially the same music that we heard earlier in the subtle level. So there's a kind of, there's a subtle musical link. Yeah. Yeah, I find myself as I listen to it more recognizing um, reprises and so forth. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I have to also say, I like that a lot of it's pretty. I like that you resolve things and it's uplifting in a mm. way. I love, I, I really um, resonate with it. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it's lovely. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I, I never got on with the kind of modern classical music, which lack, which isn't harmonic or melodic. I just don't really understand why people write that, but they obviously have their reasons. But for me, music well, you know, I'm thinking of the good, the true, and the beautiful. You know, beautiful yeah. music to me touches the heart, and I think for that you need melody and harmony. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've certainly, uh, you know, that's that's the historic lineage. I think it when we get, postmodernity wants to deconstruct all that. And exactly. It's. I don't think it's meant to be enjoyed in the same way. No, exactly. But it's meant artistically to transmit some new you know, understanding of things or, or, yeah. or, 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 you know, or something beyond understanding or I don't, I don't, I don't know what, but it's a deconstructive move and Absolutely. integral is a reconstructive move. It's interesting in, in terms of the, you know, the musical structures that um, 
you have this clear, very clear evolution from, um, say, the time of Bach over over three, four hundred years. That the the harmonies got more and more complex. So the Romantics like Brahms and then Wagner and people say that with Wagner you got to the point where there was no further to go. <laughs> yeah. With in, in, in classical music terms, with you know, making complexity and ambiguity within a, a harmonic kind of story, beginning, middle, end kind of structure. So the only move left, it seemed, was as you say, the de the deconstruction, which they did thoroughly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so it, you know, it, it is. It's for me writing this music and and being aware of integral as a post postmodern movement. I was very conscious that I was felt like I was writing post postmodern music. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, and I heard it that way too. So uh, yeah, talk about uh, your 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 take on art in general, Steve. I I, I see you're doing a a, a regular feature on integral life yeah. with uh, integral artists. So that means integral art. And yeah. what is that exactly? Well, um, I, uh, I think a little again, bit about what we're talking about, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, I think the short answer again is, is I don't know, <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, I feel I've done, I've had interviews with Gaia Orion, the fabulous Canadian artist and um uh, Santiago Jimenez from Colombia, who did this wonderful presentation at the last online IEC conference. And I, I, I just happened to be online because it wasn't in the program. And I suddenly heard that he was going to do this journey through the stages through music. And I was like, what? You know, because I'd not heard of anyone else doing that. Um, no. So I was like, oh, my brother, you know. Um, so and it was fantastic what he did and it, I completely, it, was, it was indeed yeah i was so excited um so I, I i talked to him about you know that the music and the and the levels and the stages and then um stuart davis i've spoken to and also brooke mcnamara with poetry particularly mm -hmm. and we did our conversation we did a little kind of mini performance of reading some of her poems and then a bit of the blue pearl music um lovely. so that was lovely so and and someone actually emailed me and said um you know what is in how how do you how can you recognize integral music um and he said he'd asked Stuart davis that question and never got a, a reply and i still don't know the answer to that question but um i do feel that um this thing about uh having the levels evoked the different levels evoked and and i i think of um the the painting the portrait that alex gray did of ken wilbur which i'm sure you've seen where yes. at the front of the picture is ken's face you know uh, physical face and then kind of behind that is um a kind of archetypal buddhist figure um and then behind that you kind of see the cosmos and galaxies and, and there may be an, one other um, bit that I've missed out, but I kind of saw that as, as representing the different levels, mm -hmm. the physical and then the subtle and then the causal and one taste as it were, or, you know, the, the, the cosmic consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. I think of a couple of things that Ken has said that stuck with me. One is quite recent on a, a conference that he was on in Zoom and I tuned in and he talked about that in the coming integral age, people will realize that they're 12 times smarter than they thought they were. <laughs> <laughs> the idea being that uh, as you enter into integral consciousness, you realize these different parts of yourself and, they're, and they're, they're, they become clear and you can see the movement and the development of them and how they come online. And so you can just light up all kinds of places, yeah. you know? And yeah. um, so that's one thing that, that uh, I'm inspired by. And then the other one is that w when we would ask him to define integral art, his, it, the answer would generally be uh, any art that comes from a, a, an artistic consciousness that's integral. So it right. could be something as simple as a Zen, uh, calligraphy of a zero, 
you know, or a line, but mm -hmm. there's something that comes through. It's, it's, and, um, you know, it's a little bit what you were saying earlier about just the resonance of being with people who are, you know, at least on a good day, trying to oper operate uh, on this, on this, in, in this stage, mm -hmm. that there is a resonance. There's a X factor there. Uh -huh. And, um, and I, I remember when we did the integral seminars, the whole series of seminars, I think you were, you said you were at the first one or one of the first ones, the integral sustainability, right? Yeah, I was. Yeah. Yeah. That there is a X factor of integral practitioners getting together. Mm. There's just something that is alive and online that I don't find in any other community. Yeah, absolutely. I, th I think, I think um, with time, uh, you know, what integral art is and, and kind of, as it were, subdivisions of, of integral art will kind of gradually emerge, yeah. I think. So I think, you know, from what I've kind of experienced so far, um, I, I've heard, I think I've heard someone else say about that, that quote from Ken about if an integral artist has created a work of art, there'll be something about it, you know, like, <laughs> like you were just saying. Yeah. And then there's this kind of more deliberately representing the fullness or, or, parts of the fullness of the of the integral exactly map yeah and wouldn't you also say steve that the if you think about contemporary music in general that just the mashups of music that we hear just in, in, in popular music you know that the, the sampling and you know the the uh, fusion in general that those are movements towards an integration of musical styles that we could recognize. It's a de facto integral, uh, right. even though the people may not understand it that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that kind of, that explains a bit <laughs> what I've done in Blue Pearl as well. Yeah, exactly. No, yeah. And, and actually to do it from this lineage that f felt airtight, you know, and to blow it out a, a bit as you have done, is very exciting. Yeah. It really sort of aerates the whole form to me. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I tell you, something else, to, uh, you know, on this theme about art in general that's occurred to me in talking to these people and, and meeting artists through the Integral Conference is um, is also the kind of um, the archetype of the creative artist that you know certainly in classical music, um, but also in painting. You think of Van Gogh. Um, uh, or Mozart, Beethoven, these people who had essentially tragic lives and were also, you could say, messed up psychologically. You know, Mozart said to have behaved like a child and Van Gogh was clearly mentally, you know, disturbed in some sense. Mm -hmm. And that, that somehow you have to be that kind of person to produce art. So art comes out of the, uh, the transcendence of, um, of tragedy you could say mm -hmm. and Beethoven is you know the quintessential example of that and it's absolutely the case and I'm I'm kind of thinking talking to Brooke McNamara talking to Guy O'Ryan uh talking to Stuart Davis that that actually and I you know to some extent I hope about myself I've certainly have been messed up and I you know I, st I still am to some degree uh, but I've done a lot of work you know in, in terms of healing that and I, I have a feeling that integral creators of integral art, integral artists are coming from a place of whole, wholeness. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it makes me think what Ken has kind of said so, so fervently, really, about how all our models of development, of human development, have been broken, you know, in, in the religion of tomorrow. He says that with great passion, about at last, by bringing together waking up and growing up, we have a, 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 a model of development of human beings, which is they, where they can be whole. Yeah. They no longer have to be fragmented. And um, I feel, I kind of have a feeling that uh, integral artists, they may have, you know, experienced that fragmentation, but they're, in creating integral art, they're expressing mm -hmm. a wonderful, fulfilling wholeness, which is, and then saying to, saying to the people who view or hear that art, this is possible for anyone. You know, you, 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 yes, there's always suffering in life, but um, you don't have to suffer 
in the way that a Mozart or a Van Gogh or, or um, you know, those people suffered. You, you can just have an ordinary human suffering and, it, and um, experience wholeness. Wow. Yeah. Beautifully said, Steve, and beautifully wrought in your piece, <laughs> Blue Pearl. Thank you. So thank you for being with us. And again, um, the debut, tell us about that and, and where we can participate. So it's on the 14th of May, um, and it's at 7.30 UK time, which is British summertime. And you can get tickets to, to come to London. If anyone lives anywhere near London, please come along and hear it in the church. So what church will, where will it be? In an old, a beautiful old church called St. Giles Cripplegate in the, right in the city of London, right in the heart of London. It's a, it's a church which somehow survived the, the blitz. It was all the area around was flattened, but um, it's, it stayed standing. And, and people around anywhere in the world can join either live for the, for the live stream or watch it for seven days after that. Um, and it would be lovely, you know, I really would love integral people to come from around the world and join for that concert because the piece is about the unity of the earth and to have a, a, an audience from around the world, just like the integral European conferences, would be very wonderful. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us today and for your beautiful work. Blue Pearl, a one-world oratorio. Thank you again, Steve Banks. <laughs>